Hello and xin chào. My name is Minh Nguyen and I'm a Lai Weber Research Fellow at the Lai Weber Center for Theoretical Physics, University of Michigan. I'm really excited to engage with all the amazing science you guys have been doing in the two weeks of cosmology from home this year. Today, I'm presenting a program to uh, model uh, large-scale structures at the field level using a forward modeling technique and the effective field theory of large-scale structure framework. Uh, I'll focus on the example of galaxy clustering in this talk, but the framework applies to other cosmological probes as well. So let me start from a bird's eye view of the framework. Our principal goal is to uh, model galaxy clustering directly at the level of the field, uh, which on our computer are represented by a three-dimensional discrete-sized grid. Uh, our starting point is the Gaussian initial conditions, uh, which for a given cosmology alpha is fully specified by the linear matter power spectrum P of K. Um, we then evolve this initial condition forward to the effective ratio of observation, uh, hence the name forward modeling. In left field, the gravitational evolution of matter and galaxy is described by the effective field theory of large scale structures and biased traces. Uh, observational effects such as redshift ray distortion um, or uh, survey selection function and galaxy mask are part of the forward model as well. Finally, to extract constraints on cosmology alpha, um, we require um, a field level likelihood to compare and weigh individual Fourier modes, um, that is, individual points on this grid. Uh, so why pushes beyond summary statistics like a power spectrum or a two-point correlation function? It's better worth it because our data is no longer a few bins of power spectrum, uh, but rather to cover the same volume, typically 10 to the 6 Fourier modes on this grid. Uh, I'll try to answer that question in this talk actually towards the end, but the upshot is that we uh, not only access more, but also better information. Um, in doing so. Specifically, uh, more information directly translates into um, tightened constraint on cosmological parameters. And given the current cosmology affair, um, pinning down uh, parameters like the clustering amplitude S8 uh, will help us further assert the S8 tension uh, and its origin. Better information comes in the form of the full choice posterior on cosmological parameters and the underlying matter distribution and displacement field. We'll come back to these two points uh, with concrete examples later in the talk. So uh, let me introduce the basics of the framework. Uh, there are different codes doing field level forward modeling, but they all share a similar inference scheme. Uh, I'm highlighting here the existing codes that I'm aware of, uh, but I will be focusing on left field uh, as it's uniquely uh, built on the effective field theory framework. So uh, a field level Bayesian inference uh, typically uh, must produce uh, a prediction uh, delta that uh, for the observed galaxy that data delta d um, and b materialize over delta that to achieve constraints on uh, the cosmological parameter alpha. But if you ever look at any survey or simulation, you would immediately ask the question, do we have a good prior on delta that? And the short answer is no. Uh, fortunately, we can instead uh, of delta that start from the initial conditions at heart. So essentially, we recast delta that into S heart, uh, which we know from the observations of the cosmic microwave background that is well characterized by a Gaussian field or prior. Now, uh, we need to let it evolve through uh, large scale gravitational evolution and galaxy formation process. Uh, that is the price we pay. Um, essentially, each sample in our inference now is a forward simulation itself. This is the reason why field level and forward modeling are often tied together. So, let us see um, how the uh, inference framework works in practice. So, here uh, on the right, I'm showing the true uh, slice through the true initial conditions of the data. Um, 
and on the left I'm showing the inference samples through realizations of this uh, initial conditions uh, and all samples are compatible with the observed data delta D. You can see that the uh, samples are similar but not exactly identical to the truth. Uh, this underlies the fact that uh, A, data is noisy and B, our sampler actually explores the full posterior space. So because of the time limit, I will, uh, I will just focus on two key physical ingredients or building blocks of the whole framework, the modeling of gravitational evolution and galaxy formation, galaxy bias, both follow the uh, EFT approach to last scale structure. So why do we choose the EFT approach for last few? Um, well, we want to build the forward model on a solid theoretical footing and then further build in the inference framework a rigorous control on which Fourier modes and their couplings actually enter the analysis. Phenomenological models for galaxy deterministic bias and stochastic bias fail spectacularly to extract the correct clustering amplitude. This was shown in my earlier work uh, showing here where I used n-body simulations as benchmark. Um, you can see that the transfer function between the inferred and the true initial conditions of the simulation uh, is biased typically around 30% on all scales for all assumed empirical models. This work was done using the Bock code in collaboration with the Aquila Consortium. So um, the EFT approach simply admits that we trust our theory only down to some certain scale or wavelengths here labeled by the Fourier wave number k mass. Beyond this scale, we do not have a good description and prediction of what's going on, so we must rigorously split the density perturbations here expressed as delta into long wavelengths and short wavelengths modes around k mass, then proceed to modulize over the short modes delta s. Uh, this probably makes a lot of sense if you come from the experience of analyzing power spectrum or correlation functions. Unfortunately, this is something often overlooked in the field level approach until left field. I'll return to how we implement this in a little while. So can we perform a similar split between the large scale long wavelength responses and small scale short wavelength responses for bias traces like axis? The answer is yes. And we can do so because tracer formation is effectively local in space. In this sketch on the right, uh, we can appreciate that the formation, the galaxy formation spans a long term frame, um, yet a very limited spatial region. So given that insight, we can split the matter galaxy connection or bias suspension uh, between large scale and small scale perturbations. The large scale component or galaxy prediction field delta that follows a deterministic expansion being constructed out of local matter density and tidal fields. The small scale component, or galaxy noise field epsilon, follows a stochastic distribution, being Gaussian and white on quasi-linear scales. The scales where perturbation transition between very small and uh, comparable to unity. So um, recall that we must materialize over the small scales noise epsilon uh, in our analysis, um, assuming that it's Gaussian white noise, we can do so analytically and end up with a Gaussian likelihood here expressed in the Fourier basis. The amplitude of the noise component sigma epsilon is to be inferred for each clustering samples we analyze. So having um, went through the um, forward model and likelihood building plots together, we now can put those uh, into the complete left field framework. Um, we start with the initial conditions filter at some scale k max. Uh, so all Fourier most beyond k max are set to zero. We then construct a bias tracer field either in Lagrangian or Eulerian basis. The flow chart here illustrates the Lagrangian basis where protose tracers are initially constructed in the initial conditions and then displaced to
to the redshift where uh, traces are actually observed. We again filter the bias tracer field, removing almost beyond k marks before compared to the uh, observed data, which uh, is also filtered in the same way. The left field code is entirely written in C17, uh, supporting shared memory parallelization, and we anticipate a Python interface in the near future. Uh, the code uh, leverages um, a combination between uh, slice sampling and Hamiltonian Monte Carlo sampling methods to efficiently uh, sample through the uh, joint space of uh, initial conditions and cosmological parameters. Let us now shift gears and actually talk about a scientific application of let's view. We will consider this controlled experiment where data is simplified simulation of galaxy clustering data. The problem is being given a simulation of bias traces, can we correctly infer the cosmology of the simulation? Specifically, um, in our case, the relative amplitude of primordial power spectrum alpha, with alpha being one implies the correct input primordial power spectrum amplitude. I would like to highlight the fact that there's no residual space distortion as the traces are given and analyzed in the co-moving rest frame. The only source of information we can use to break the alpha and galaxy bias degeneracy is non-linear evolution, as alpha and bias is perfectly degenerate in linear evolution. So how do we generate the simulation data? We use the left field framework itself with a twist. Uh, we typically generate simulations at a higher cutoff lambda zero and use a lower cutoff lambda in the analysis. This cutoff or lambda mismatch mimics the real world scenario where galaxy formation typically evolves uh, density fluctuations mode at higher scale than the cutoff scale in the analysis. Um, here are the results. Um, you have seen earlier a qualitative assessment of the inferred initial conditions, and here is a better quantification. Uh, I'm showing on the left histograms of the residuals between the inferred and true Fourier modes of the initial conditions for three Fourier uh, cabins. Residuals being zero implies unbiased inference. Uh, the Gaussian dotted lines indicate the linear filter solutions correspond to uh, standard BO reconstruction of the initial conditions. Uh, even for these fairly large scales, as indicated by the wave numbers K, uh, the posteriors are not Gaussian and generally uh, less biased than the linear filter solution. Now, let us, let us look at the inverse cosmology. Here, specifically, the relative amplitude of the primordial power spectrum alpha and mass parameters. Uh, so the simulation data are generated with a second order Lagrangian perturbation theory at the cutoff lambda of 0.14. Um, inferences are performed with either first order or second order uh, Lagrangian perturbation theory at the cutoff lambda of 0.1. From top to bottom are uh, alpha, linear, and higher order galaxy bus parameters. The same going from left to right with the addition of the noise amplitude as the first parameter. Red and blue contours are inferenced using uh, first and second order LPT as the gravity model. So green and violet uh, contours are the same, but for another realization of the data. Contours indicate the one, two, and three sigma levels, and dashed lines indicate the true input values. Um, there are two key uh, takeaways from uh, this counter plot. Uh, the first being that the uh, cosmological parameter alpha uh, is, re is essentially recovered unbiased. And the second being that um, <clears throat> when there is a mismatch between the gravity model, uh, so LPT and 2LPT, um, there are shifts in the higher order Gaussian bus parameters. Uh, these shifts can actually be predicted from the EFT theory. Um, and in fact, the dotted lines indicate the theoretical predictions, which match the actual constraints very well. 
um, if we uh, interest, uh, are interested only on the cosmology, we can analytically materialize over the mass parameters. And here I focus on the materialized constraints on alpha and, and the noise amplitude sigma epsilon. Um, as shown here, we achieve for the modest cutoff lambda 0.1, a 4% constraint on alpha, or equivalently uh, AS or sigma 8. This is a great improvement uh, over the uh, standard choice power spectrum and by spectrum analysis. Um, I should also clarify that here the simulation volume is um, uh, essentially a box of two gigaparsec on the side. And um, um, short noise level mimic halos of uh, the mass range of uh, 10 to the 13 to 10 to the 13.5. Uh, the solar mass. So in this analysis, we further pushed the EFT framework um, and included higher order galaxy mass in the simulation, still generated at a cutoff of lambda 0.14. And here are the left few constraints. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to violet and green contours, which indicate constraint with and without the uh, cutoff lambda mismatch. The key insight we learn from this exercise is that nonlinear galaxy bars introduce uh, non-trivial mode couplings that can bias the inference of cosmological parameters, even with an EFT cutoff. And this is probably what happens also uh, with n-body simulation data that I showed earlier. The non-presence of the bias when there is no cutoff mismatch confirms that this bias is of physical origin and not some inconsistency in the left field itself. Um, the same can be observed when analytically marginalizing over mass parameters. Here, green and turquoise contours indicate the inferences with cutoff lambda mismatches. So, uh, I hope I have convinced you that the field level approach uh, access more and better information yielding optimal cosmological inference and also a proper uh, inference of the density distribution uh, and initial conditions. Um, so um, we can also apply this framework on new probes, including galaxy momentum, as propped by the kinematic synthetic effect, or galaxy intrinsic shape, as uh, usually measured uh, in uh, weak lensing analysis or measurement. Um, the upshot is that left field will be publicly available, so stay tuned for the uh, developments and stay tuned for the public release. Thank you.